All right, just going to do a video on what the Roman Catholic Church teaches about salvation, their false gospel in regards to salvation. So let's show from the scriptures that the Roman Catholic Church is teaching a false gospel. This is an article from thewayoflife.org. Of course, I don't agree with David Cloud on everything. I have some minor disagreements with them. But this article on what does the Roman Catholic Church teach about salvation is spot on. Now, uh, let me just point this out first. The Holy Bible is a book that the Roman Catholic Church claims they gave the world, but really, they burn people at the stake for reading this book right here. And the Holy Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, turn to Galatians chapter 1, oops, went too far, Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9, says... But though we, or an angel uh, from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. And then of course there's 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom ye have not preached, whom ye have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, whom ye have not received, or another gospel, who, uh, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So Paul in that path, in that verse there is obviously telling the Corinthians that you know, you know, someone's going to preach you another gospel, and you're so carnal and worldly that you're going to accept it. But the Bible says, "Let him be accursed if they're preaching a false gospel." That simple. And the gospel of Roman Catholicism is a false gospel. So what does the Roman Catholic Church teach about salvation? Let's read this article. Because of the ecumenical movement growing, a growing number of Roman Catholics are familiar with biblical theology about salvation, such as born again, and some have been trained to reply affirmatively to the questions, are you saved, or have you been born again? The problem is that they do not mean by, they do not mean by this what the Bible means. Roman's doctrine of salvation is not the true gospel of complete and sure salvation through personal faith in Christ. It is a gospel of works that is sometimes presented under the guise of grace. So, Sorry, just went out for a run, so that's why I'm panting. But the Roman Catholic Church Church's doctrine of salvation can be summarized as follows. Rome teaches that Christ, having purchased the redemption by, by the blood and his death, delivered it to the Catholic Church to be distributed to men through her sacraments. Rome's gospel uh, centers in the Catholic Church, the Pope, the priesthood, and the sacraments. While Catholicism teaches that Christ died on the cross to purchase man's salvation, it is not satisfied to, to simply invite men to receive this salvation by faith directly uh, from the resurrected Christ. Consider the following quotes from Second Vatican Council. Quote, Christ's only begotten Son won a treasure for the militant church. He has entrusted to blessed Peter, the key bearer of heaven, and to his successors who are Christ's vicars on earth, so that they may distribute to the faithful for their salvation. So, and that's from the, the Constitution, of, that's from uh, Vatican II Council of Constitution of the Sacred Liturgy, Apostolic Constitution, on the revi Revision of Indulgences, Chapter 4, Chapter 7, and page 80. They say this as well, uh, quote, for, for it is through Christ, Catholic Church alone, uh, which is the universal help towards salvation that the fullness of the means of salvation can be attained. Uh, it, it was to the Apostolic College alone, of which Peter is the head, that we believe that our Lord entrusted all the blessings of the New Covenant. And that's from a Second, Va Second Vatican Council, Decree of Ecumenic Ecumenism, Ecumenism, Chapter 1 and 3, page 415. So they believe that the Church holds the, the, the keys to salvation, and that there's no salvation unless the Church gives you its sacraments. Uh, that's what you call a cult, plain and simple. Okay. Jesus Christ is the way to salvation. Let me show you the screen. Actually, let me let me do it on the uh, on the screen. Let me just show you that on the screen. Uh, Jesus Christ is the key to salvation, not uh, any kind of pope or priest. They can't give you salvation. That is a lie from Satan, basically. John chapter fourteen, verse number six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you got here Pope Peter, who supposedly is supposedly is their first pope, basically. Acts chapter four, verses ten and twelve. Be it known unto you all, and to all the chill people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand but here before you whole. 
This is the stone which is set a knot of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus Christ that saves, not the name of the church, the holy, the holy Roman Catholic Church. Yes, yeah, the unholy Roman Catholic Church. That's what it is. Second uh, Peter chapter, Second uh, Peter chapter, one verses eighteen through twenty one. Check, take a look at what Pope Peter says. For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with with corruptible things, as with silver and gold, from your vain from, from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, hmm, Roman Catholic traditions, you could say, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Uh, and who who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in the sacraments and the church and the holy and the pope. Oh no, that your faith and hope might be in God. Verse 22, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth, how do you obey the truth? John chapter 6 verse 29 to 30, you believe the gospel, you believe on Jesus Christ. Also you see that with John chapter, 1 John chapter 3 verse 23. You, believe, you obey the truth by believing the gospel. Seeing you have purified your souls by obeying the, in obeying the truth, through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So, how do you, you know, obey, how do you get saved? You believe the gospel. This is what Pope Peter said. He said, not by, you know, silver and gold, not by the tradition of your fathers. So, he's con so you can see it there. He's, he's essentially you know, in a modern day setting, condemning the Roman Catholic traditions, not by the tradition of your fathers, but by faith that is in God. That's how you obtain salvation, not through the, the vain pagan traditions of Roman Catholicism. But back to the article. So, you know, Peter wasn't very good at being a pope, apparently. So the second, Rome's plan of salvation has several steps. The first step is baptism, the pagan doctrine of baptismal regeneration. A wicked, very wicked doctrine. According to Rome, salvation begins with at baptism. It can be an inf, it can be infant baptism for those who are born into Catholic homes or adult baptism for those who approach the Roman Church later in life. Sorry, has something in my mouth. Either way, the Catholic Church teaches that baptism, uh, that through baptism, a person receives spiritual life. Quote. By, by the sacrament of baptism, whether it is properly conferred by the way of the Lord, determined and received with power, dis dis dispositions of soul, man becomes truly incorporated into, into the crucified and glorified Christ and is reborn into a sharing of the divine life. Second Vatican Council Decree on Ecumenism, uh, chapter 3, you know, tw uh, 22, page 427. Again, I'll be linking this in the description so you can read it yourself. The next steps are the other church sacraments. After baptism, a person is considered to be born again and part of the church. This new life is said to be nurtured and kept alive through the confirmation, mass, penance, and other Catholic sacraments. This is what they say. Uh, quote, just as Christ was sent by the Father, uh, all, so also he sent the apostles that they might preach the gospel to every creature and proclaim that the Son of God, by his death and resurrection, had freed us from the power of Satan and from death and brought us into the kingdom of his Father. Sorry, let me just... Okay, sorry about that. My cat walked in and you know, interrupted the video, but let's get back to the article. So, anyway. So I was saying this is what the Second Vatican Council, or Second Vatican uh, Constitution of the Sacred Liturgy proclaims. Quote, Just as Christ was sent by the Father, uh, so also he sent the apostles that they might preach the gospel to every creature and proclaim that the Son of God... Oh, come on, Boa. You just had to do that, didn't you? Cats. You gotta love them. They just love to interrupt my video. But... My, my cat always does this. He just likes to mess around with me like that. But anyway, back to the article once again. So it says, Just as Christ was sent by the Father, so also he sent the apostles, that they might preach the gospel to every creature and proclaim that the Son of God, by his death and resurrection, has freed us from the power of Satan and death and brought us into the kingdom of his Father. But he also willed that the work of salvation, which they preached to be sent and trained through the sacrifice of, and the sacraments around the entire liturgical ritualistic life, Oh, that life revolves. So, basically that's what the Second Vatican Constitution of the Sacred Liturgy proclaims. They also say, uh, quote, the seven sacraments are the necessary means established by Christ, really established by Christ, chapter and verse, please. It's not in there. Through which the, the, his redeeming life, sanct a redeeming, life-giving, sanctifying grace is imparted to individual souls. And they say, if you don't receive the sacraments at all, you don't receive grace. Really? What does the Bible say about that? 
Where, where, where does grace come from? Let me just make sure I have the right scripture reference. Acts chapter 15, verse 11. Turn there. If you have a King James Bible, let me just do a full screen. Acts chapter 15, verse 11. Where does, who, who gives grace? Is it the church, the holy, the pagan Roman Catholic church? The church, the, the Catholic church is not holy to God. It's only holy to Satan, meaning it's unholy. Acts chapter 15, verse 11. Let's see who, who is the one who gives grace. But we believe that through the grace of the Roman Catholic Church. Oh no. But we believe that through the grace of, our, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. That's Acts 15 verse 11. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the grace of the Roman Catholic Church. Further proof on that, let me show you Ephesians chapter 2 verses, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10, For we are his, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It's not of yourselves, it's not of your works, it's by Jesus Christ. Second Timothy chapter 1 verses, I think it's Second Timothy chapter 1 verses 8 to 9. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of, of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Who gives, who gives grace? It's Jesus Christ, not the Roman Catholic Church. That is a false satanic doctrine. It's taking salvation out of the hands of Jesus Christ. But let me let me continue on in the article. Rome teaches that salvation is by the grace of God through Christ and is received by faith, but it denies that salvation is by grace alone through faith alone. And they say that you know, quote, in recent years the church has has reiterated, re reiterated again and again that we are saved by faith and the sacraments of faith both are necessary. That is John T. Uh, Christian, Christian celebration of the sacraments, page sixty five. The Catholic Church defines grace. They redefine what grace is, basically. The Roman Catholic priest speaks of salvation through grace, through the grace of Christ. He does not mean the unmerited free grace of Christ. You can see Romans chapter uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 15 to 18, and Romans chapter 3, verse 24, showing that grace is a free gift. And Romans chapter 11, verse 6, shows that God's grace is not earned by your works. It's that simple. But it says he does not mean the unmerited free grace of Christ, uh, whereby a believing sinner is eternally and completely once for all saved from sin. By, quote, grace, the Roman Catholic Church means that God's help to live a righteous life. Now, there, that is partially true. There is a changed life after salvation. The Holy Ghost comes in and changes your life and cleans up sin out of your life. But it's not to be saved. It's not to be saved or to stay saved. Okay? It's after salvation. It's the results of salvation. That's what the good fruit comes from. Again, I showed Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created for good works. But it's not to be saved. I did my video on the Catholic doctrine of devils, denial of the scriptural new birth. They teach that the good works are not just the result of salvation. In fact, they actually condemn you to hell if you say that the good works are just the result of salvation. It's wicked. It's false doctrine. It says, consider this following quote from Vatican II, quote, all the children of the church should nevertheless remember that their exalted condition results are not from their own merits, but from the grace of Christ. If they fail to respond in thought and word and deed to that grace, not only shall they be, not be saved, but they shall be more severely judged. That's Vatican II, Dogmatic Constitution on the, on the Church, chapters 2, 14, page 337. This is a strange kind of grace. It is a grace that does not result in eternal security, or eternal certainty, but only the possibility of living up to God's requirements. It is a subtle, unscriptural mixture of grace plus works that is condemned in Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, which I read at the beginning of this video. Then, of course, they give the biblical answer to Rome's salvation. You can, again, I'll be posting this in the description. You can feel free to read it yourself. But the Roman Catholic Church is not a Christian church. It is a pagan cult from the pit of hell and from Satan. It's that simple. Roman Catholicism is a satanic pagan cult that is damning people to hell. Uh, Roman Catholicism is not the faith once delivered unto the saints in Jude chapter 1 verse 3. It is a mixture, a hybrid mixture of Greek, Roman, Babylonian, Egyptian paganism in with New Testament truth. Don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism and don't be deceived by their false gospel. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.